All right, all right, somebody had to say it. This show is not good. It's not even close to good. Matter of fact, it's really fucking bad. Akamega Kill is one of the most popular anime of all time. It is as high up as the 30 most popular anime on my anime list. I also see people walk around and treating this as it's some amazingly sad anime, which like, how? How do you watch this shit and still say this is a good anime? Well, whatever. The point of this video is to wisen you motherfuckers up since you guys seem to be unaware what really makes a good anime. Spoiler warning for Akamega Kill cause I will be spoiling whatever the fuck I feel like I need to spoil to shit on this show. Um, don't worry, you won't be missing out on much anyway, this show is ASS. ASS. So without further ado, Akamega Kill starts with our main character, uh, Tatsumi. Yeah, that's his name. He's killing a big monster to flex his strength on these random strangers that just do not give a fuck. He's trying to get out of this little town that he lives in to go make it big in the capital so that he can get enough money to save his town from the ultimate evil that is taxes. But as he gets there, he gets rejected from the army, stolen from, and then saved by a nice rich girl who- OH MY GOD! Also, this anime wanted to be even darker than it already was, so two of these bodies just so happen to belong to his two friends, whose existence that we are alerted to right before this happens. Yeah, I wonder why. Anyway, Tatsumi gets taken in by this group of assassins against his will by the name of Night Raid, and we get introduced to all the members of this organization. Akame, her name is in the title, Lion Milf, Bubblegum Princess, but a lolly, Pervy Jack Septiguide, Lil Blueberry, and then the Gay Man. No really, they just introduce him by saying that he's gay. Oh, almost forgot there's a little lesbian cut as well. She's like the captain of the team, but god she's fucking boring and she's barely in it, so like... You can't blame me for forgetting her, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We find out the Night Raid's goal is to overthrow the corrupt government, and Tatsumi goes like, Shit, Negro, that's all you had to say! And immediately decides to join the Night Raid after all. Now that you know the setup, I wanna skip a few episodes to episode 5. Blueberry Bitches episode. So basically the way this anime is set up, at least in the start, is that they focus on a character for an episode and in that one episode they dump a bunch of information about them in an attempt to turn these characters from strangers to actual meaningful characters that we're supposed to care about but like you need more than a 20 minute episode to build a character so that so that just kind of falls flat on its face this blueberry girl that episode 5 is all about had four fucking scenes where she actually says something two of those being her saying a single word, yes, I counted. And so this entire episode is now about her. And we learn about her past, why she's an assassin, you know, how she is as a person, her personality, how kind-hearted she is, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. You want to know why? Because she just dies the next episode. Yep. This is a common problem this show has, where they try to make a sad death scene, without doing the proper character build-up needed to actually make a sad death scene. I'll, I'll give you more examples. Gay Man has an episode all about dead. Two new characters introduced as replacement for the dead ones, yet they're, they're both dead. Of course they are. Not only are the characters barely developed, but when they die, the deaths are the most predictable thing ever. You thought that was all that was wrong with the death scenes? <laughs> I'm not quite finished yet. The old character development right before dying. It's a storytelling device as old as time. And it fucking sucks. It always has sucked. And especially in this show, it giga sucks. To be honest, it's really getting fucking tiring by now. Let's take Princess Bubblegum as an example. She's your average tsundere until episode 21 near the end. Right after completing her character arc, she just dies, right before confessing to the main character. The main character and this bubblegum bitch have been arguing this entire show. They've been rivals. But then they have a few episodes together and then she just automatically falls in love with her. And then she dies. Like, <laughs> mm. 
What the fuck? Literally, the entire reason she became a better person in these last few episodes before her death is just because she fell in love with him. What is that? What kind of fucking reasoning is that for, like, character development? That's so stupid. That is so st I'm getting off track. All of this shit put together makes for the most boring, predictable, emotionless death scenes of all time. Which is bad on its own. But it becomes 10 times worse when you realize that death scenes is all this anime is. Look at this cast. That's a good amount of characters. And how many do you think live? Two. Fucking two of them. And all these characters die in the span of 24 episodes. This means death feels very frequent, which is not a good thing. In Akama Get Killed, the first character death happens episode 6, and then only two episodes after the next death happens. This shows you this show isn't scared to have characters drop like flies, which isn't a bad state to have the viewer in, but it can go wrong very easily, as it puts the viewer on edge. It makes the viewer more scared to get attached to the characters, since they know they can just die at any moment. You need to work around this cautiousness by writing very genuine and real feeling characters that have layers that you can get properly attached to and by taking enough time to make the viewer feel safe again. Now, what does a Kamiga kill do? None of these. What the fuck did you expect? Of course it does none of them. The Kamiga kill characters fucking suck. They suck so fucking bad. They are all boring, one-dimensional characters that are quite literally the most generic anime archetypes you can think of. We got the Sundere, the Kudere, the weird horny milf bitch with big tits, God, ah! the pervert, the airhead, literally just a gay stereotype. He is literally just a gay stereotype. And then you just have your fucking average shonen main character. Like, ugh. Literally, his whole mission is, guys, I gotta get rich so I can save my village. And I also want to save all of my friends, because that's what I care. Shut up. Shut up. Please shut up. Right. I forgot the character that gets introduced later. We got another Sundere. And then this guy who isn't even human, so there's no personality to speak of. Except the fact that he has OCD for some reason. If you've watched just a few anime, you've seen these characters before. You've seen these exact copy and paste archetypes over and over and over again. And I'm so tired of it. I beg of you, give me one good reason to give a single fuck about these characters. Because I don't, I, I just don't see one. I don't see a single fucking one. So, that leaves time. Admittedly, after the second death, there was a large gap between the second death and the third. The second death happened episode 8, and then the third happened episode 17, which is almost 10 episodes without a death, which I think is good enough to make you feel more secure within the show. Sadly, the third death was of Diska. I haven't really mentioned her much, because she fucking sucks. She sucks so bad. She's introduced as a replacement for the gay guy and blueberry glasses girl in the middle of the show. These writers were already having trouble making the characters we've been with from episode 1 interesting. Of course they're not gonna be able to make us care about this random girl who just shows up randomly in the middle of the show. And if that wasn't bad enough, she's just a fucking asshole. Literally one of the first things she says is that the two team members that have died thus far were just weaklings. You expect me to care about this motherfucker? Who gets introduced midway through the anime and is also just a fucking asshole. And how many episodes do you think she gets to stay alive? Five. Fucking five. You saw what happened with the blueberry girl. You saw what happened if you only give someone five fucking episodes to live. It becomes a terrible death scene. And... <laughs> That's not even it. That's not even it. Her death happened right after she killed the only good character in the show. The only character that actually was unique in some way. The only character that was actually like enjoyable to watch. She killed him and then she died afterwards. 
Yeah, serves her fucking right. Serves her fucking right. Why should I care? Tell me why I should care. And now, after her death, this means that me as a viewer, I am now back on edge because I remember, oh shit, this show likes killing people a lot. Am I sad? No. No, I'm fucking not. I don't give a fuck that she's dead. Why the fuck would I? Why would I care? Why would I care? She was a whole bitch. Now, I did mention there was actually a good character. So let's talk about him for a second. First off, he is a villain. Yep, the only good character, the only character that had a death that actually made me feel even a bit sad is a villain. His name is Bulls, and even though he is a part of this corrupt government and is also kind of a vicious mass murderer that has burnt down countless villages filled with innocent people, I was sad that he died. Why? Well, Bulls is first of all a pretty unique character. He's a nice married man with a child that's just trying to do his job. He feels bad. He feels horrible even about the things he has to do to get his money, but he does it all for his family. For his family, he'd do anything. He's a horrible person. He kills countless of innocent people just for his selfish wishes. But he is a kind person. He is kind and he feels guilt for what he does, but still feels like it's what he has to do and so he puts up with it. To him, the enemies trying to kill him aren't his enemies, but instead just the weight of his sins coming back to haunt him. He doesn't blame them for wanting to kill him and he thinks they're completely justified in doing so because it's what he deserves for what he's done. So why doesn't he just kill himself or let them kill him? Well, it's for his wife and daughter. Bolz quite literally lives for his family and in his final moments he doesn't express any anger towards his murderer or sadness about dying. Instead, he's just crying about the thought his wife and kids are at home waiting for him. He crawls and crawls, not trying to survive, but instead just get to his daughter, get to his wife. This is how you do a death scene. It's crazy how the example of how to do a death scene I bring up is from the very show that struggles with making death scenes. I don't know why or how they made this and only this work. This guy is a villain. There was no need to go all out for him and only him like this, but, but they did. Bolz is the only character in the show that felt like he had love poured into him. And him being here just makes the other terrible death scenes stick out even more. It just highlights how fucking garbage this show is. Because it shows you, oh, this is what actually good writing looks like. Now, we're not gonna use that. We're not gonna have that. You know, we don't do that shit, but like... We want you to know this is this is what good writing looks like. Jesus Christ. I've been talking about death scenes for way too long. Well, it's what most of this show is to be fair. It's either death scenes or shit that leads up to the death scenes. And just like a bunch of fucking dumb filler that I don't care about because these characters are so fucking boring. And sadly, the other small aspects of the show are also just really bad. Like the fact that- Let's talk Siri. She's one of the main villains of this show and god she makes absolutely zero fucking sense. First of all, let me just show you how she managed to kill Ms. Blueberry. Yeah. Yeah, you saw that right. This girl has modified her body to the point where she has guns not only inside her arms that can only come out if her arm gets chopped off, which is so fucking stupid. Why would anyone prepare to get their arms chopped off by fucking hiding guns in there? And how the fuck did her arms work if all the bone in her arm has been replaced by a fucking gun? And then she has a fucking gun down her throat. How does she eat? Drink? How the fuck is the trigger even being pulled in the first place? And if you think this is the dumbest it gets, oh no no no, she only gets worse from you. After this, she starts doing this random thing where her dog weapon thing bites her arm and then her arm changes. Like, like what? What is going on here? How does he hold all those weapons inside of him? Like, she has so many different fucking arm variations and we're supposed to believe that all of them are just like 
inside this dog at all time. And, and even so, how does he manage to detach her current arm and then attach another one? This just, this just makes no sense. Like, every time she's on screen, I can't help but just think, what the fuck is going- What is she doing? Like, she always has this bullshit. And then her death. Even her death is bullshit. Because she just, like, bites her teeth together. And for some reason, that triggers a bomb that she apparently has had in her head this entire time. So you mean to tell me that just biting her teeth together is enough to activate a bomb? Well, why didn't activate here? Or here? Or here? Like, like what? <laughs> There's so many moments like this in a Kamiga kill. So many moments of pure lazy writing. Here we have a scene where Akame is fighting an enemy that makes her see the one she loves the most. The enemy thinks this is gonna make it impossible for Akame to attack him as no one can attack the one they love the most, but she slashes at this hallucination of her sister without hesitation. Not because she sees through the illusion, but instead because she just really wants to kill her sister. But what happens when she actually meets her sister? She hesitates and fights worse than usual. This directly, like straight up directly, goes against what this show has stated earlier. It's, it, it, God, this show is so bad. There is genuinely not a single good thing in this anime. Not, not fucking one. Not even the intro is worth writing home about. So I really don't get what people see in this show. Um, quick editor's note. As I was editing this, I found out that Kamiga Kill has actually two openings. And the other one is a certified banger. I, I'll, I can give you that one. A Kamiga Kill, you suck. This show is complete ass. But opening two rocks. Opening one still ass though. Well, not ass. It's alright. But you know, it's completely mint. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Not even the intro is worth writing home about, so I really don't get what people see in this show. Well, that's a lie. I know exactly what people see in this show. What they see is what this show could have been. It has an interesting enough setup, a very simple but still interesting plot, some good character designs, decent animation, a nice group of friends. It really has everything going for it, except for a good writer's team. If this show was actually well written, it would have been a fantastic show. Even the fucking dub was fantastic. Which I know since I'm currently re-watching the show and dub while writing this script. I can't say I don't get it. Mirai Nikki is an anime I hold very near and dear to my heart. Matter of fact, it's actually the anime I've rewatched the most since I find it so fucking entertaining. But the show is trash. The writing in this show is genuinely so awful. But even despite of that, I really enjoyed it. And for a while, I didn't even realize how badly written it was. It took watching a video by the good Scamboli Reviews to make me think back on the show and go, holy shit, this really does suck, huh? Sometimes you just let yourself be blinded by your enjoyment of a show. You just enjoy it without thinking too hard about it. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. You can enjoy bad shows. You can look at a show with the worst writing possible the worst animation, the worst story, and you can love it. It really doesn't matter. So why am I making this video in that case? What's the big idea with making all these videos about what anime or manga are good or bad if it doesn't matter? Well, because it's fun. I enjoy it. Just like I think it's fine to enjoy bad shows, I also think it's fine for me to enjoy writing these long videos about shows being really badly written. It's what's fun to me. What I'm trying to say here is simple. Just do whatever you enjoy. Stop worrying about meaningless and pointless things like whether or not what you enjoy is actually well made. Who fucking cares? If you like it, then you like it. It's really that simple. Just do whatever makes you happy. And if you want to know what will make me happy, then it's you liking and subscribing.